I'm Andrew Kaunitz, Professor and Associate Chair in the OBGYN Department, University of Florida College of Medicine in Jacksonville. Today I'd like to discuss depomedroxyprogesterone acetate and uterine fibroids. Uterine lyomyoma or fibroids represent the most common gynecologic tumor. The prevalence is particularly high among black women. Investigators funded by the NIH conducted a prospective study of fibroid incidence and growth by recruiting women living in the Detroit, Michigan area who self-identified as Black or African American. Women 23 to 35 years of age at baseline with no known history of fibroids were interviewed and received GYN ultrasound evaluations approximately every 20 months for a total of four study visits. Among over 1,600 evaluable participants, baseline mean age was 29 years and almost one quarter had BMIs of 40 or greater. Every use of any combination estrogen progestin contraception or depomedroxyprogesterone acetate or DMPA was 81% and 43% respectively. At baseline, one or more fibroids were identified in almost one quarter of participants. The overall incidence of fibroids between visits approached 10% and was similar between ever and never users of DMPA. However, the incidence in recent users those who had used DMPA within the prior two years was only one half the rate among never users. The fibroid growth rate among recent DMPA users was 42% lower than in never users. With 18 months of follow-up, while the dimensions of fibroids had essentially stabilized among recent users, dimensions increased by over 70% in never users. Among women who had recently used DMPA, the likelihood of tumor shrinkage was over 40%, twice as high as the rate among women who had never used DMPA. Given that progestins can cause fibroid growth, the findings of this study might appear paradoxical. However, estradiol is known to upregulate fibroid progesterone receptor expression, and DMPA use lowers serum estradiol levels. GnRH antagonists, as well as agonists, can reduce fibroid dimensions as well as fibroid-related bleeding. However, these treatments are expensive and package labeling indicates they should not be used longer than two years. In contrast, DMPA is inexpensive and notwithstanding package labeling's suggestion that duration of use be limited, decades of experience indicate this agent can be safely used for many years. I am hopeful that this, con that this carefully conducted study will lead to more assessments of DMPA's role in the management of symptomatic uterine fibroids. Meanwhile, in my practice, I plan to discuss and offer DMPA in selected patients with fibroids. I'm Andrew Kaunitz. Please take care of yourself and others.